Hey YouTube, it's been a while since we did anything good and dangerous, so I thought today we would play with water and electricity. In all seriousness, I'm going to start this right off and say, if you don't know what you are doing, uh, watch along for the entertainment value, but don't try this at home, kids. Uh, this is a real good way to at least find out if your circuit breakers are working. So other than trying to have some fun, what am I doing here? Well, my office is dry. Really, really dry. And that is just not good for me, and it's not good for all the electronic stuff that I have up here. If I had any hair, it would be sticking straight out like this. And I'm pretty sure I have shocked my fingerprints clean off. That's what this thing is designed to fix. This is a humidifier vaporizer, depending on where you're from. It has a tank of water, and it runs past a sealed heating element down here in the bottom of this tower, where it vaporizes. It comes out the top, looks like steam, because it is. And that steam humidifies the air in the room. But this particular one does not have any sort of a humidity control on it. It has two settings, a little bit of steam and a lot of steam, but no way to shut itself off automatically when you get to the desired set point for humidity. And that's what this contraption is. There are fundamentally four components here in this mess. Buried underneath all the wires is an Arduino Nano. The Nano is the same as any of the other processors in the Arduino family. It just comes in a smaller footprint. Over on this end is a sensor that goes by the really obvious name of DHT22 because it's a digital humidity and temperature sensor. Got this from Adafruit.com. That's about one of the best places to find little I.O. doodads for small microcontrollers like the Arduino family. Sitting prominently on top is a two-line by 16-character LCD display. And down on this end is the relay module. I call it a relay module because it is, in fact, more than just the relay. This includes the relay with a 5-volt DC coil, but it also includes a little 2N222222 whatever uh, family transistor to switch the current for the relay coil so that the Arduino doesn't have to drive it all by itself. And it also has little red and green indicator lights to tell you whether or not the module has power and whether or not the coil is energized. These are a little pricey as relays for a project like this goes. I think they're about seven bucks a pop, uh, but they sure are convenient and the indicator lights are kind of helpful when it comes to doing diagnostics. Ultimately, my goal here is twofold. The first is obviously to get some humidity into this room, uh, but not enough to get condensation on the windows and stuff like that. That's really the only reason you need control on it. My somewhat loftier goal is to try and convince you that doing little automation projects with these Arduinos is dirt simple. It does not require a whole bunch of test equipment. I did not use an oscilloscope. I don't even think I used a multimeter to hook this thing up. All it requires is that you have a computer with a USB port to hook this thing up, cut some free software, and a little bit of knowledge to know where to go get the libraries. Those are the uh, canned pieces of code you can dump onto your Arduino that work things like this LCD and like this sensor, so you don't really have to figure out how to do it. So let's take this thing over, set it up on the highly insulated cardboard box, plug it in, and see if it works. Assuming it does, I'll take you over to the computer and walk you through the code that's running on this Arduino so you can see just how simple a project like this is. Okay, here we are, set up all plugged in. The white wire running out the back here runs over to the humidifier, and the black wire runs over and is plugged into the wall outlet. Right now I'm powering the whole thing off of uh, one of those batteries that you use to recharge your phone or your iPad. I'm going to have to get a USB you know, plug-in-the-wall power adapter because this thing only runs for 12 or 18 hours or some such thing before it's dead. And I hope you can read this on camera, but the only reason I've got the display on here is so that I can see what the Arduino thinks the temperature and the humidity in the room actually are. One thing you can see is that this DHT sensor, while it's a little bit on the slow side, it's pretty sensitive and it's pretty accurate. Just me here about a foot away from the thing doing all of this yakking for the video is enough to drive the humidity in the area up a tenth or two of a percent. But right now my humidity is reading exactly in the middle of my control range. I have it set to kick on at 20% humidity and kick off at 25% humidity. Let's go over and look at the code and see how that works. All right, I can already see some of you glazing over at the prospect of looking at computer code, but I promise you, this is going to take less than five minutes of your time, and you're going to see just how simple it is to get one of these Arduinos to do something useful. 
that really extends the possibilities of what you can make out of your wood, metal, plastic, whatever, if you can build a few brains into it. So uh, stick with me here. I think this is going to be worth it. Now, right off the bat, we get into the quote unquote secret sauce. These include directives are what tell my program to use bits of code that are already floating around out there in the ether. The first one is the library that has all the functions in it that are necessary to work with that LCD display. And the second one is all the code necessary to work with my temperature sensor. Including a library tells the development environment where to find all of that code, but you still have to create sort of a pointer to it, if you will, so you can use it within your program. That's what this line does. It declares a variable named LCD that points to that liquid crystal display library. And in this case, the one little bit of information I have to tell it when I set it up is what pins did I connect my display to. I used the same ones as they used in the example program that came with the library so that I wouldn't have to change anything and I would be sure it would work. Same thing for the humidity and temperature sensor. The library needs to know what pin is it connected to and what type of sensor are we working with. I defined words to use in place of these two numbers just to make the code more readable and so that I would have only one place where I had to come in here and change the values if I want to move my humidity set point or how much the thing has to move one way or the other before it turns on or off. And then again, mostly for readability, but also so I don't get confused, I defined some words to use for the pin that the relay is connected to, happens to be pin 9 on the Arduino, and for the on and off states of the humidifier. That relay board, because of the transistor that's on it, it works kind of backwards. If you energize the Arduino output, it actually opens the coil on the relay. So I defined on and off to be the correct state so that I could make sure my code works the way I think it's going to work. Finally, we get into some actual code. All Arduino programs have at least two functions in them. Function number one is the setup routine. This is the one that it executes once, and only once, on power up. What kind of stuff do you do in a setup routine? Well, mostly it's housekeeping. For instance, these two lines tell the Arduino that that pin 9, remember humidifier means 9, that I connected the relay to is going to be an output pin. And then just for good measure, I make sure to set it to my state of off. This should be the default. Technically, these two lines aren't needed, but we're dealing with 110 volts AC, so I wanted to make sure. Most third-party libraries have some sort of a start, begin, init, some sort of a function that they want you to call from your Arduino setup to get them going. In the case of the LCD, that initialization routine is called begin, and what it wants to know is how big's your display. Mine's 16 characters wide by two rows. The begin call for the temperature sensor is even simpler. It doesn't take any parameters at all. And the remaining five lines of code are just me setting up the screen for use in the rest of the program. It should be clear when you first power it on, but there's no harm in calling this call before you get started. And then I want to put the words temp and humidity on the display. Temp goes in the very first row, which is row zero, starting at the very first character, which is character zero. Humidity also starts at the beginning of the row, character zero, but now we want the second row, which since we started with zero, is row number one. This little curly brace is the end of the setup routine, so that's everything the Arduino is going to do once when it powers up. The second function in the program is called loop, and this is the other one that you'll find in every single Arduino program. This is the body of code that the microcontroller will execute over and over and over and over again infinitely until you unplug it. There's absolutely no reason to read this humidity sensor 100,000 times a second. So the very first thing in the main body of my program is a 10 second wait. It just slows the whole thing down so it operates at a pace that's more appropriate for something like humidity control. After the wait's over, the first bit of real work is to go get the humidity and temperature values from the sensor. Note here that I'm using this DHT object that I created earlier, and then calling one of the functions that's defined in that library we included. This is the real beauty of these libraries. I have no idea how read humidity is implemented. I don't know how it interacts with the sensor, how it goes about providing me a number. All I know is I make this one call, and I get back the number that I want. After I'm done reading the sensor, I have to do one quick error check. This is something I copied out of the example code for the DHT sensor. The ISNAN in this line is a C function, is not a number. So this line reads, if the humidity is not a number, or, that's what the double pipe means, the temperature is not a number, then execute the stuff between these curly braces. Well, my stuff isn't that intriguing. Essentially, I just print out an error message on the display, and then I call this return function, which tells the Arduino to bail out of this execution of the loop function. That'll make it go back to the top. Wait another 10 seconds and try the sensor again. 
But if I make it down here, I have good numeric data in my temperature and humidity sensor, so I'm ready to start doing something useful with them. The first thing I did was convert my temperature from Celsius, which is the default unit for the temperature function, over to Fahrenheit. I used a handy function in the DHT library to do this, but obviously if you know the formula, you could just put it right here in the code. And now that I have my data and it's in the format that I want it, I can go back to the display and print it out. These two lines put the character right after the word temp and then print out the temperature in Fahrenheit. The comma two means two decimal places then move the cursor down to the next row and over a little bit because humidity is longer than temp and print out the humidity reading. Again, two decimal places. There are a couple of ways to put the control logic together and they all work. I decided to start with the humidifier state. Now, even though we defined the humidifier pin as an output from the Arduino, it'll still let us go read that pin and therefore know whether the humidifier is on or off. If the humidifier is on, we'll drop down inside these curly braces. And what do we want to do there? Well, we want to check and see how does the humidity level compare with our set point plus our dead band. And that's what this if statement does. It says if H, which is our humidity reading, is greater than the sum of the set point and the dead band, works out to 25 in my case, then again, we drop inside the curly braces. What do we do there? Well, the humidity has reached our threshold for turning off the humidifier. So we're going to write the status of off to our output pin. This brings us down to the else keyword. This else matches up with the if above, and it works just the same way as when your mother used to say, or else. The else condition is true when the if condition is false. Well, our if condition was the humidifier is on, so by default, our else condition must be the humidifier is off. What do we do if the humidifier is off? We need to check and see, should we turn it on? That's exactly the opposite math. In this case, we're checking to see if the humidity reading, H, is less than our set point minus the dead band. For me, that works out to be less than 20%. If in fact the humidity has dropped that low, we'll drop inside these braces and we'll write to that digital output, turning the humidifier on. And that's it. Here on line 94, this curly brace closes the loop function. So that's the end of the program. If you go back and count them up, you'll find out there's only about 40 lines of code in these 94 lines of text. The rest of it is comments and formatting. And of that 40, only 15 are actually needed to read the sensor and control the humidity. The rest of them are either defines to make the code look pretty or working with the display. Okay, YouTube, there's the nickel tour of how the prototype went together and things are looking pretty good. The humidity control is working beautifully. Uh, the humidity ramps up pretty quickly when the unit kicks on. It's a relatively small room and stops at 25 right where it's supposed to. And it pretty much hangs out there until the heater comes on, circulates and dries out the air, and then it drops like a rock. And sure enough, the humidifier comes back on. So where am I going with this? Well, obviously, if I'm going to leave this set up when I'm not here, <laughs> which I'm not going to do with it the way it is, I need to do something about the way it's put together, make it a little, little safer, put in some kind of an enclosure. And the other thing I probably need to add to it is some sort of a water detection level. There, there's no point in running this humidifier if the tank is empty. From there, the sky's the limit. I could add a second temperature sensor to sense the outdoor temperature and set my humidity set point based on the outdoor temperature rather than just having a static number. I could add Wi-Fi or Bluetooth to this, start logging data on the computer, or make the settings available from my phone, whatever I felt the need to do. The sky is really the limit with uh, one of these Arduinos. So much is out there and so much has already been done. And I hope you've seen that it's frankly just not that complicated to throw one of these things together. For right now though, I'm just happy to not be getting shocked anymore. All those enhancements are gonna have to wait for another day. Till then, stay safe and thanks for watching.